Uh, good evening. I think we can make a start. The clock has kind of struck six. So, um, so welcome to this meeting of the Planning Committee. Um, I have been advised that there are no fire drills planned for tonight, but if the alarm does sound, Mrs. Snoop will ascertain the situation and provide further instructions. And welcome back, Mrs. Snoop, by the way. I would remind you that this meeting will be broadcast live and recorded for playback on the Mason Borough Council website. <clears throat> but will anyone else be recording or filming the proceedings? I, I need to ask this so that people at the meeting will be know if this will be happening. No? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, members who are using mobile phones or tablets are asked <coughs> to please ensure these are on silent and are only being used with regard to the business on the agenda this evening. Thank you. So let's make a start. Uh, item one, which is apologies. Do we have any apologies? I think Councillor Powell, I think, we, who's not sent his apologies, unless we have an image of him there, but no. Okay. <laughs> um, item two, substitute members. Are there any subs? I don't see any. All right, thank you. Visiting members. I see one visiting member, definitely. No, uh, no uh, one visiting member. Please, please, yes. You can stand up as we all know you, oh, Councillor Nogan. Uh, Chairman, uh, item 18 on the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Nogan. Okay. Agenda item four, items were drawn from the agenda. I'm going to ask Mr. Bailey to stay. Oh, Richard, it's you, is it? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, item 19 uh, relates to the woodcut farm application uh, that was refused last summer by the Council. Uh, this item was placed on the agenda as it was anticipated that legal advice would be finalised in time to produce an exempt report relating to the appeal that has been lodged against that uh, refusal. This advice has not been finalised in time and so the report is not available. As such, it is requested that this item is withdrawn from the agenda. Thank you. Are we all agreed on that? Agreed. Thank you very much, members, for that. Um, agenda item five, date of adjourned meeting is the 2nd of March, 2017. <laughs> well, you never know. Famous last words, Councillor English. Please. <laughs> um, agenda item six, urgent items. We have one update, which I assume everybody has a chance to read. Okay. Agenda item seven, disclosures by members and officers. Are there any disclosures by members and officers? Councillor Harwood. Thank you, Chairman. I need to disclose in relation to item 17, Bethany Boxley Road that I'm a member of Boxley Parish Council. Um, however, I haven't participated in any of the Parish Council's discussions regarding the application. Therefore, I intend to speak and vote when it is considered. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Are there any, any other disclosures? No? Okay. Disclosures of lobbying. I'm going to take the, as we've only got three items, I'm going to I'll take them all together. All right. So um, I'm going to do in the order that they'll be coming up on the agenda. So. Um, Agenda item 18, which is 7 Claremont Road, Maidstone, Kent. Has anybody been lobbied on that? Councillor English? I have been lobbied by um, a resident who objected and by Councillor Nagy. Okay. Nobody else then? Okay. Agenda item 16, which is uh, land next to Primrose Paddock, Stockett Lane, Coxheath. Who's been, anybody been lobbied on that? No? No? I haven't either, so it's fine. Okay, agenda item 17, uh, Bethany Boxley Road. I've been lobbied on this one. There's one, two, three, four. You got them all, Russell? Four, yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, thank, thank you all for that. Uh, agenda item nine, exempt items. Will I move that the remaining items on the agenda be taken in public? as proposed. I think you all agreed on that? Okay. <clears throat> Gender items 10 and 11 minutes of the meeting held on the 2nd of February adjourned to the 9th of February. You'll note that um, 
um, there's been amended minutes that uh, members will have received. Um, are you all happy to agree them as is? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, gender item 12, uh, presentation of petitions. There are no petitions this evening. And agenda item 13, uh, deferred items, which um, I'll hand over to you, James, for that one. I haven't got anything further to add on that, okay. Chair. Any comments on that? Uh, this one of them is an old friend I keep seeing coming up. But, <laughs> but you know, that's the way life is sometimes. Okay. Right. <laughs> Agenda item 14, appeals. Anyone wish to make any comments on appeals? No? Okay. Yes, of course. Go for it. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just to add, um, there's probably just one item that members may raise issues. Item, um, appeal item number two on page 14, uh, which was the land at Mount Avenue, Blunden Lane, Yolding. Um, obviously, uh, members will see that that appeal was allowed. Um, certain members, if they've read that decision, would have seen that um, the inspector made a conclusion on the council's five-year supply, which to our mind was slightly erroneous and we've um, taken legal advice on that position at the current time. So I can't update you any further on that, needless to say that the Council uh, is just taking legal advice on the issues and the matters raised by the Inspector. Um, we'll update you in due course on that, but it's just to let you know on that particular point. Well, that's excellent. Thank you very much. And Council English, I'm sorry I didn't see your hand up. Um, firstly, a comment. Very satisfactory outcome on the land at Forest Hill Tovel. Um, can I just ask, um, in relation to the appeal allowed, Norfolk Blind Lane, Breadhurst, which was, I've just, I must have overlooked and not seen that. What, what, would it, what was that allowed? Why was that allowed, Mr. Bailey? Um, in terms of the, the details before, um, from recollection, it was on the basis that the inspector didn't see any harm arising from the development. I haven't actually got the case in front of me to pick out the actual details. I can, I can um, if you wish me to go into more detail on the next, I can bring that item back and go into a bit more detail on that point. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Timms can something add a bit further to that as well. Um, yeah, again, not as much detail, but I'm aware that there was an extant permission for, I think, two dwellings on the site, so the inspector considered that the difference between the two and the proposal here uh, was, was not unacceptable, so there, there was a permission there rather than uh, nothing at all. Oh, yeah, and it was on the basis that the difference between the three pairs and the two consented schemes that in terms of landscape terms he didn't see there was such a significant difference that would warrant a refusal, so that's why he allowed it. Is that okay, Councillor English? I'm sure, yeah. Okay, fine. So no more questions, then we'll go on to agenda item 15, which... Of course you may, go on. Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor English, you don't want an update then on the... Next, next time round. No, the explanation is is cogent and makes sense. Okay. Uh, agenda item 15. You're pleased to know there are no chairman's announcements, so we can go straight on to the um, applications, um, and we'll start in the order that we're now being presented, which uh, is agenda item 18, and it's reference 16 forward slash 507. <coughs> 852 and it's 7 Claremont Road, Maston, Kent. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is an application to demolish the existing garage and erect a two-storey side extension. Um, I will just uh, refer later on in the presentation to the appeal uh, because there was an appeal that was dismissed on this site for a two-storey and front extension. The inspector was satisfied uh, in terms of impact on the street scene regarding the two-storey extension and the rear projection, but refused it on the base of the front extension. So the scheme in front of you omits the front extension and addresses the inspector's um, uh, grounds. But I'll, I'll go through that as I um, carry on the presentation. So this is the site. 
the two-storey extension which projects to the beer so that to the, to the rear the single-storey element has been omitted on this scheme so this is the application uh, taking you through in terms of profile you see um, it's subservient it's set back from the front elevation it's subservient in its roof form these are the matters that was picked up by the inspectorate You've got the rear extension here, so from the front it looks as a Serbian addition in terms of where its mass is reduced. Um, you've got the existing elevations up here and obviously the proposed elevations down here. So just bear that in mind, I'm just going to take you through to the, while it's there, I'll take you through to the uh, appeal decision. Um, so it was um, in terms of the side elevation in terms of the front this was, this element was the element that was refused by the inspector that effectively the inspector said this element was discordant in the street scene um, so in terms of um, you've got your floor plan where you see it's set back both on ground and first floor and then you can see that in the profiled elevation and this is the projection from the rear. So this is the existing house, and this is the projection to the rear. So this is the property here. I think the, photogra I think the photographs have been slightly um, elongated, yes. and so apologies for that. I don't know quite how that's occurred. Um, but it's not, the garage is obviously not quite that wide. Uh, so you've got the property. The no, 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 it has been elongated, I'm afraid. Um, and again, looking at the view in context over here, this is the rear elevation, so obviously the garage would be demolished, <coughs> be extended across out here with that element of two-storey extension out the back here. And again, as I said, that was the previous refused scheme. So I'm just going to read out some of the issues which are pertinent. The main, the main issues are set out in the report, but some of the key issues that were set out from the previous inspector um, and, he, and the previous inspector said the proposed two-storey extension would not harm the pleasant character of the area. The two-storey extension would be set sufficiently back from the front elevation and the ridge line would be lower than the host property, so creating a subservient appearance, which corresponds with guidance set out in the Council's residential extension supplementary planning document. In another section, he said, these features would ensure the proposed extension would not appear of excessive bulk or massing when seen as a, an addition to the host property, and the extension would appear subordinate and a further unassuming change to the street scene. He acknowledged that the pair of houses would not be symmetrical, but saw that the pairs of houses on the road have already been extended and changed so as to lose symmetry. And of more relevance is that, in his judgment, the appearance of the pair of houses would result from the two-storey element of the proposed extension and would not harm the character of the area. He acknowledged that there would be a reduction in the gap between the appeal property and the neighbour, but he said that the gap is not a key component of the character of the area, which is more significantly derived from the setback of houses from the road and the landscaping to the front of the houses. And in any event, he considered the gap would be retained, would be sufficient to ensure no harm to the character of the area. Where he did refuse the application was on the basis that he concurred with the council's concerns regarding the forward projection of the single story extension. Now that element, I won't read any further, that element has been removed from this application. So to all intents and purposes, um, the element that you're considering before you is the same minus the front story or the extension that was considered by the inspector. And so on that basis, as clearly set out in the officer's report, uh, the application does accord with the development plan policies. It's a significant material consideration in terms of the inspector's previous decision. And on that basis, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you for, for that. That's very clear and concise. Um, before I invite speakers, I'm going to ask um, my legal advisor to set out the process for, for speaking. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a short announcement for members of the public and in particular those who are speaking on an item uh, this evening. As you've just heard, the item is announced by the chairman and then the planning officer introduces the item. The chairman will then call the speakers. 
When you hear your name called, please can you come forward to the table in front of you and take a seat. To speak, press the middle button. You don't need to hold it down. The button will turn green and the ring around the mouthpiece on the microphone will turn red. You will have three minutes to speak and you'll see your time counting down on the screen to my right, to your left. At the end of the three minutes, I'll tell you your time is up. Once you finish speaking, please press the middle button again and it'll turn white and return to your seat. You may hear some of the speakers referred to as visiting members this evening. They are <coughs> members of the council, but they do not sit on this committee. They also have three minutes to speak, but they have no right to vote on any of the applications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Russell. Right, I would like to call on Ms. Welsh for the applicant, please. Good evening. My name is Tina Welsh. My mother, Mrs. Golding, is the applicant for this proposal. The property at 7 Claremont Road has been owned by my family for over 40 years. My grandparents moved into the house in the 1970s, and it is now owned by my mother. Sadly, my mother suffers from severe memory loss. She currently lives alone, and her health is rapidly deteriorating. She therefore needs ongoing care and supervision. This was a promise I made to my father on his deathbed. The proposed extension is required to enable my family and I to move in with my mother to care for her during her, this difficult time. I appreciate that this may not be a planning consideration, but I hope it provides you with the background as to why this extension is required. My partner had cancer last year, which was removed. I have health problems, um, and so does my son. So by putting us all in one property, obviously it makes life um, a lot easier for us. You'll note that there have been two previous applications for extensions to this property. The most recent was subject to an appeal, which was dismissed in December 2016. In this decision, the inspector raised no objection to the two-storey side extension. His only concern related to the single-storey front extension. The currently proposed two-storey side extension is identical to that previously proposed. Furthermore, the single-storey extension has been omitted from the current scheme. As such, it is considered that the inspector's concerns have been addressed. It is hoped that there should therefore be no impediment to planning permission now being granted. I appreciate that the neighbouring occupiers have raised concern primarily in terms of the impact of the extension upon their amenity. However, in the assessment of the appeal, the, previous, the inspector provided the following conclusion on this issue. Due to the distance between number five and the proposed extension and due to the limited rearward projection of the extension and design of the extension, he was satisfied that there would be no material loss of light to number five or nine or the gardens, nor would be any appreciably overbearing effect on the outlook for number 509. As the current proposed two-storey extension is identical to that considered by the inspector, this conclusion must also be um, applicable to the current proposal. This extension will make a considerable difference to my mother's quality of life and will enable us to care for her and provide flexibility should my partner's cancer or my health deteriorate where one of us would need to give up work and it gives us the security of being in the property. We did look at moving, but my mum's memory loss, I'd be afraid that she wouldn't be able to find her way home, whereas she's lived in that house for many, many years and it was my grandparents before, so she knows the area. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Welsh. Um, Councillor Nagy. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, members. Um, yes, uh, this has got a bit of history, as already been said, and you can see on your papers. Um, the application in August 2015, it was refused, and a revised one in 2015, that was refused, and it went to the secondary state, um, and that was rejected uh, at a later date. Um, I think you'll find that most of the neighbours are not against an extension. Their, their main grievances uh, for an, an extension, uh, uh, and as previous, um, was the uh, concern of the rear extension, and I wish the inspector had made a note of this or mentioned it in his previous papers, or in his, his, if he was happy or not with it, but the main concern for neighbours is loss of light, uh, and that's, that is the main concern for the neighbours, um, and that obviously has not been changed at all, and is still a two-storey extension, uh, and that is the main reason we're here tonight. Um, 
and that is, if it was to go ahead, it would be a great loss of um, daylight to the neighbours and, and, and their situation. It, it's causing them a bit of stress too because they don't know where they are and they don't want to be in this situation either. So I will keep it short. I would say to members tonight just to have a good look at this tonight, members, and, uh, and hopefully you will make a wise decision. Um, obviously, uh, neighbours would like to see it refused um, uh, as the back extension is still, in their opinion, the main co concern with this application. Um, and that's why we're here tonight. So hopefully members will look at it again and make their conclusion on that. Thank you very much, members. Uh, thank you, Councillor Nagy. Um, I'll now open the discussion up. And Councillor Harwood, I think you had your hand up first. I think I the wall member might. I never know who's the wall councillor sometimes on this. <laughs> Councillor Cox, please, and then Councillor Harwood. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, obviously, the, the street scene here is really very set, but I don't think that is something that we can consider. The inspector has considered this. The applicant has addressed what the inspector has brought forward. And I'd be interested, the only question I do have, was there a light assessment done of where the sun travels? Is it Bream? Sorry, is it the, is it the Bream assessment? Bream, Bream assessment. Uh, was, that, was that done? Sorry, right, don't, hold on, I can't talk to you. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so was that done and did it have no adverse uh, findings? In terms of um, assessment and in terms of policy, you know, the officer would have applied a 45 degree test in terms of general assessment, so would have done a sunlight test, but wouldn't have gone through the full details of the, you know, the sunlight and daylight full testing. So, you know, likewise, um, the inspector would have made a, a similar assessment um, on the basis of accepting the proposals as previously considered. And the only changes with this is the removal of the front extension. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, uh, because obviously the, the buildings don't have side windows to these that people would sit at, uh, the, the outlook is towards the garden or to the front of the road. So I really am struggling to find a planning reason to turn this down. Um, but that is just the outlook. The people who want to be in here, the applicant, uh, I can see every reason for this to go forward, uh, in which case um, I would like to uh, actually move the recommendation on the papers, if that's okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cox. Uh, Councillor Harwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Claremont Road is a bit of a salutary tale about kind of estate planning, because when the estate was originally built, Claremont Road is the one of the original accesses with a gate road to the old Humphrey Repton landscape parkland that belonged to James Watman. And it used to have an avenue of walnuts that went down there. They were covered by TPO number one of 1953. And they have all been lost now and none have been replaced. So I think it just underlines a little bit the value of, of, of TPOs and when we look at these new estates built onto historic landscapes you know, we, we haven't got it anymore. However, in relation to this specific application, um, looking at the appeal inspector's decision, I'm, I'm fairly relaxed with it, and I'm fairly relaxed actually about the impact on the street scene anyway with the setback. The, the one thing that I would like to bring up is that when the residential extensions SPD went before an inspector, the inspector made a point of um, praising um, policy six, um, paragraph 625, the policy about building in features for wildlife, which Natural England brought up as well. And I think that we've been pretty good now in on new residential development picking up on building in those niches for wildlife, but we're not picking them up as a matter of course for residential extensions. And because this is essentially just an, an extension width-wise, you've got a lot of um, north-facing wall. Because the other thing that's been lost from Vinters Park is when I was a boy, it was just full of house martins all around the estate. Now there are none at all. Plastic soffits and whatever have done for them. So I would like to crave the indulgence of the mover 
that we add an additional condition and that we do build in at least a swift brick on the, on, in the eaves on the northern side of the extension um, and policy 625 in the residential extension SBD is our hook. Thank you. And I'll second it with that. For English. Yes, um, we, we really do need to make sure that we add the appropriate condition 625 uh, to, to extensions where appropriate. On <clears throat> talking about the, the history of this application, um, well, sorry, this site and the various applications, I do see where Councillor Nagy is coming from. And if we had a totally free hand, um, I have to say that I would not be 100% happy with this proposal. Regrettably, we have been left with some rather, well, regrettably or not, the fact of the matter is we have been left with uh, no room for manoeuvre whatsoever because the Imperial Inspector has said pretty decisively that there is nothing wrong with the side extension um, and there is no front extension anymore. So that's the end of the story with the amendment that Councillor Harwood has move to, to incorporate the, sorry, has had added to, to the recommendation. I think we do have to approve it. But I have to say, I do understand where Councillor Nagy and the objectors are coming from. I, I would have done it slightly differently if we are given a clean sheet of paper, um, because I do think there is an effect. But it, the inspector has chosen to take a different view, so I don't think we can second guess that. Uh, thank you, Councillor English. I've got two more speakers, then we'll go for the vote, I think. Councillor Rowan. Um, I would, was just at that particular stage happy to second Councillor Cox's motion to approve. Councillor Prendergast. Thank you. It's really just a point of order more than anything else. I, and I may as well bring it up in this application. I just noticed that this one and others have a caveat at the end which say, says the conditions set out in the report may be subject to such reasonable change as is necessary to ensure accuracy and enforceability. You know where I'm going with this, Mr. Bailey, because I haven't seen it previously. Only one application the last meeting, nothing previously. And if we can't enforce anything, then why have we got conditions in here? Because it makes it a little bit tricky as a, as a member of the planning committee. Thank you. Yeah, no, that, that shouldn't be on the template. Um, I have had a word with the, uh, the, the senior officer on, those, on that issue. That shouldn't have got onto the report. Um, we are creating a, uh, Mr. Timms has done a bit of extra work in terms of committee uh, template reports, and we are putting new reports on the system, so that shouldn't be on there and won't be occurring again. It shouldn't be on there. So, yes, it will be minuted, and it shouldn't be on there. Just to be clear, that the informative section is being deleted and the NB, is that correct? Yeah, sorry. Um, in terms of the entire formative section should be deleted and the issues you referred to the conditions from the report. So that could be minuted on the... Fine. Thank you, members. Then I think we... Do you wish to speak? No? I just wanted to say I'm absolutely happy with the uh, inclusion of a swift brick and a back tube or whatever. And I'm staggered that by now, how long have you been a councillor, Tony? That we haven't got it on everything when it comes here. It's just unbelievable. So I do uh, accept that going on there. And uh, yes, I'm happy to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would that, would that, I, I mean, instead of having a new condition on that, should we attach it to condition um, three, um, which in effect the materials condition, which shall include the provision of Swiss bricks in the north, and we can put a specific in the northern elevation? Economic way to tackle it, so, so happy with that. I mean, just, just for, for interest, what, um, para 625 of the residential extensions SPD actually says is in designing an extension applicants should consider, consider opportunities for the creation of wildlife habitats so it's as simple as that so you know it's fairly flexible Thank you. So, uh, so can, we, uh, can we take it that it's a delegated authority to uh, resolve condition 3 to include a swift brick in the northern elevation. Yes, exactly. to, to rework. 
Councillor Ryan, did you quickly want to say something? It was only a small point. You've just raised an issue that's not specific to this actual planning application, but perhaps we could raise the issue of informatives and recommendations for the next political spokespeople and chairs and vice chairs meeting, please. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, but it's not part of this application. So we'll go straight to the vote, including subject to that minor change on, or well, not minor, change on condition three. Can, then, Yes, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did know. <laughs> me. You, so you take you from me totally. So I'll start again. And please don't interrupt. Um, the recommendation is to approve subject to conditions, and we know what the conditions are. Can I see a show of hands to approve? I think that's Nemcon. There's, there's no one against. So we don't have to go to any other. All right? So it's approved. Okay, let's go to agenda item 60, which is uh, reference 12 forward slash 1209, land next to Primrose Paddock, Stockett Lane, Cox Heath. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is an application for two additional gypsy and traveller pitches uh, at an existing site. Uh, I'll run through this aerial photograph just to describe the site because I think it illustrates it quite well. Um, this is Stockett Lane, just to the west of the site here, and the site runs all the way down to this point and then back along this line here. There's existing <coughs> permission for two pitches on the site. This is plot one here, so that already has consent. There's a public right of way, which runs along here, this diagonal line. And plot three here already has permission as well. Uh, the application relates to plot two in between here and plot four at the end. There's an existing gypsy site to the north here and another to the south here as well. And the site is just to the north of Cox Heath, and it's in a countryside location. It currently falls within the southern anti coalescence belt, uh, which is in the current local plan, but that's not proposed to be taken forward in a new local plan. But the site uh, will fall within a landscape of local value in a new local plan. So the application is retrospective, as I said, for two additional pitches, um, each with a mobile home a utility block, an area of hard standing. So this is plot two here, which permission is sought for, and this is plot four at the end. So running through the photographs, this is the access to the site. That's plot one, the mobile home that has permission that you can see there. This has just gone into the site, and we can see the, the long access way along uh, the south side, and this is plot two, the permission is sought for. Uh, so it has the, the mobile homes already in place, obviously, and we've got the utility building here to the front. And this is plot four at the far end of the site. Again, the mobile home and the utility building. And that's from a similar position, just looking back along the access track. Uh, so Stockett Lane is at the end here. And this is just showing the public right of way. So the plot one that's got permission on this side, and this is the area of plot two. Uh, so the main issues are con uh, in this case, the site, as I said, does benefit from permission for two existing plots. And the site is allocated within the submitted local plan, and that's for six pitches. And then for the reasons outlined in the report, uh, the proposal is considered to comply with this policy. Um, and that's considered to weigh in favor of granting planning permission. The site is well contained by existing landscaping. There's established native uh, hedge and tree planting along the, the main four outside boundaries, and the policy seeks retention of these uh, boundaries, and that would be secured under condition four. Uh, there's planting along the public right of way that's required under the policy. Um, on this side, which is what we're dealing with, there is some native planting in place, uh, but that would be secured and managed by the condition. So overall, the landscape impact is considered to be acceptable. Uh, information relating to gypsy status has been provided, 
and that outlines that one of the pro proposed occupants of the plot currently travels for work purposes and the other occupant used to travel with her father but has ceased to do so recently because of the birth of her child. Uh, they are considered to comply with the definition. There are no other objections and therefore permission is recommended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, can I call um, for, on Councillor Webb for, of Coxeath Parish Council? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to clarify for members, um, when there was the uh, um, talk about uh, visiting members, I am here representing Coxley Parish Council, not uh, Borough Council, so that's why I did not uh, say that. Having said that, um, I was not on the Parish Council when this application originally went in, which was in 2012. So I was not um, originally uh, involved in their discussions on the parish council objecting to it. So um, I've got just a sort of a letter from the parish council to be um, talked about um, and their reasons for objecting to the uh, proposal. Uh, Concern the change of use of land for the station of two additional mobile homes and utility blocks with associated hard standing for a gypsy family. This location is an open countryside just to the north of Coxheath and to the uh, east of East Farley and is covered by both the countryside policy EMV 28 and the southern anti-coalescence policy EMV 32 in the saved local plan, which we have just been told obviously is not being carried forward, but um, there are issues in the new emerging local plan. Um, Coxheath Parish Council is extremely concerned that the Borough Council Planning Committee has seen fit over the past few years to give a number of permissions for gypsy traveller development in this area. This has led to considerable urbanisation of the rural character of this area, with urban style roads, bricks, buildings, walls and pillars, etc. The proposed development further intensifies this urbanisation by consolidating an existing area of development through infilling, in contravention of policy EMV 32. The land is also best quality agricultural land. For these reasons, we request that the application is refused. We are also concerned that no local residents, most notably those in Forster Lane, whose visual aspect will be affected by these plans, have been consulted on this application. The only residents consulted have been those in the nearby mobile homes who all claim to be members of the same family. In addition, we have not seen any evidence of gypsy or traveller status, which is, of course, critical because planned permission of this type of development would not be given to any other section of the community. Um, there is established history of failure to enforce conditions on previous planning permissions given in the general area. Also a number of more detailed issues that have been addressed on this application. And a few of these have been put down on the papers in front of you now. Um, also, there is a little anomaly that in a letter to Laura Gregory, the original case officer, the agent stated that it referred the houses were for the cousins, not for the stepchildren that have been put on the um, papers before you now. So whether that needs clearing up, I'm not sure. Other than that, that's all I have to say on the issue. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Webb. Thank you. Um, Councillor Borton, I think you first was the floor. Councilor thank you Brown. very much, Mr Chairman. Um, as a general rule of thumb, I'm always a bit wary about landscapes of local value and any, any development that, come, that comes forward of, on them because by the very nature of their, of their definition, they are important landscapes and ones that we must try and preserve. But at the same time, this site is allocated in the draft local plan for a reason. And reading through the report in front of us, it's, it's very hard to disagree with the fact that they, they meet the criteria for, for, um, for gypsy status. Um, the visual impact uh, doesn't seem to be terribly severe and I find it very hard to find any planning reason whatsoever in order to um, refuse this application. So um, I'm very happy to move what's on the papers in front of us. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Uh, Councillor Round, did you quickly want Again, I would have been in the same position to second it, but having said that, I, I just want to raise the attention that many, many members will already have realised Councillor Cox and I go on about this all the time, but note, this is a one hell of a retrospective, submitted in 2012, 
I mean, how much more, how many more are we going to be offered? It seems very substantial that these people, whether it's whether you're for or against, whether you think it's good or bad, people have gone through five years' worth of pain and stress before we've got to this point. So I sincerely hope we're getting towards the end of these retrospectives. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ram. <clears throat> but I'm going to, there's no more speakers. I'm going to go straight to... Ah, oh, two more speakers. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mark. <laughs> Who's first of the two? <laughs> but, uh, I... I am concerned, like Councillor Round, at the length of time this has taken, because maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem a particularly complex, and maybe I'm missing something, but uh, there we go. Having said that, the, the planning issues are very straightforward. They're not always straightforward. Often they're very complicated with gypsy applications. This is one of the least complex I've seen, so, so I'm a little baffled, but may, maybe I'll take this up with officers outside this meeting. That's probably the best thing to do. But I, I will support this particular application. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that was the point I was talking to Clive uh, about as uh, Richard, and I do apologize for speaking while you were talking. Um, it is the length of time some of these are taking to come to us. But also, and I hope this will be brought up at the uh, at chairman and vice chairman's, well, the, the groups, political group spokesperson, we have a 36 foot by 13 foot utility slash day room. I really would like to see us come up with some sort of structured addition to the local plan or whichever part of the GT uh, we need to actually look at because we need to restrict the design or size of these. It is silly. I've said we could park a Cessna in there. This one you couldn't. You have to take the edges of the wings off. But we must look more carefully and we can't ask people to wait five years. Children have been born and sent to school and possibly left and gone to university by some of these. It is wrong. We must clamp down on this, but please can we in some way provide a possibility of an addition um, uh, or guidelines for day rooms, please. Can we move that forward in the next meeting? Thank you very much. Um, I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I sympathise, Councillor Cox, because we have had this discussion previously in terms of what are the means and the mechanisms for, for doing that. I mean, obviously, we've just gone through a local plan, lots of conditions. Um, some of those refer to SPDs, DPDs, um, and we're sort of coming out at the end with the planning inspector giving his interim findings. So, you know, that is where, um, if you were going to impose those kind of size limits and restrictions uh, and put like a guidance, uh, you know, as, as there has been previous guidance from DCLG or ODPM as there were before that, um, which is subsequently out of date and I think has been partly withdrawn. So I think there I'm saying it's um, not the horse has bolted, but it's difficult when you're going through a local plan and that's the opportunity to put it in that, in that time. Now, I'm not saying moving forward if that was a particular issue because the inspector has said that we will be looking at this local plan in five years' time, by 2021, uh, we will be having to have a review of the local plan, um, which takes account of a lot of the issues. So moving forward, I'm not saying that those discussions can't be had um, with the policy team, and if that's uh, uh, an idea that members wish to, to, to take forward, there is an opportunity going forward, but not at the current time. Um, I think it's a bit late to start looking at those issues now. But I do take your point, which Councillor Cox is raising, um, as we've had discussions previously. If I could just comment on the length of time of applications, um, I do acknowledge the concern that members have on those issues. We are putting in, in place a, a sort of review of, of gypsy and traveller applications and looking at how we can dedicate resources to those issues. Um, regarding their very nature, um, they are a lot of these applications are retrospective. I think the key issue is the date, 2012, and we're now 2017, and that's the time frame members have come, may possibly not due to the retrospective, because as you're all aware, 
um, you know, applicant, applicants can put retrospective applications, but we are putting resources behind these issues of, of applications coming forward um, on Gypsy and Traveller applications. I hear what you're saying. I don't, I, I, I think the problem that I get from that brief statement was regarding Gypsy and Traveller applications. This is just an application. And I don't see why we should have to transfer any resources. This is just an application. And we shouldn't be, we're not allowed to say that should be different than that. So therefore it should be on the same course. If there are things that make it more detailed that you have to look into it, then that's possibly one way of looking at it. But I don't think we should differentiate. We try not to, and I don't think the best I don't think we should be differentiating between this. And as for retrospective, we're not sending out a very good signal if it takes five years for anybody to come to anywhere, be it bricks and mortar or gypsy and traveller applications. They're going to just move on and then go, it's all right, we'll do it under retrospective. And that's the wrong attitude. Surely we shouldn't be sending out that signal. I mean, I, I hear what members are saying in terms of those issues. All I'm trying to do is advise members and update where we are. Um, there are complexities and there has been um, legislation changes and guidance in terms of the PPTS guidance in 2015. I'm not trying to make excuses. It's not acceptable for five years to get an application. I, set, I accept that. I'm not justifying that particular point. What I am saying is that there are certain complexities um, that we need to, to look at and what we're trying to do is move those forward. I think we'll take it as that. I think that's that. Um, Councillor Mumford, please, and then Councillor Hull, then we'll go for the vote. I've, I think most of my questions have been answered by the officer about what I was going to say. When I first got to this committee, I got fed up of Councillor Harwood asking for swift bricks. We got an assurance that this would be put as a condition. I'm now getting very fed up with Councillor Cox still talking about the utility and we're not going forward, but we heard an explanation for that. Um, if we don't have a, a policy, maybe the parishes would consider writing that policy within their neighbourhood plan and they would not usurp the local authority. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mumford. Councillor Harwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, developing Councillor Cox's level playing field argument, I, I, I'm not entirely sure that we need a new policy in relation to ancillary development going on on gypsy and traveller sites. The, the MPPF, um, it, it has an overarching objective to achieve good design. And that applies to gypsy sites as much as it does bricks and mortar sites. And we are starting to see some really good landscape treatments now where, where clearly it's being picked up amongst the community that, that good landscaping is important. And we've got that across to bricks and mortar developers. That, that is now permeating the gypsy and traveller community. So I think potentially the way forward is on some sites, dependent upon the size of the community, dependent upon the harm to the landscape, perhaps it can take some a bigger ancillary development, washrooms and so on. There are other sites which are very sensitive where we can't have a big porter cabin in the countryside because it, it, there is harm. So I, 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 I would just make a plea that we, we don't discount um, that, that argument around good design um, because it's a gypsy and traveller site and, it, and it's not you know, permanent, so to speak. You know, some of these sites, they're permanent permissions and, and we really do need to ensure that um, it's thought about in terms of, of layout, location and design. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Yes. Um, I'm now going to propose that we go f for the vote on this. This is um, agenda item 16. Um, and the recommendation is to approve subject to conditions. We have a proposer and a, a seconder. And can I have a show of hands to approve? I guess them because oh, one. Okay. And to refuse? Abstain? One abstention. So the recommendation is approved.
subject to the conditions. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, and the final item tonight is agenda item 17, which is um, reference 16 forward slash 502 179, which is Bethany, Boxley Road, Waterslade, Kent. We do have one update, which I think we noted right at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the, just quickly, the urgent update from the Parish Council essentially amends their objection uh, to concerns only relating to the street scene. Uh, so this is an application for extensions to a bungalow and works to create a parking area and some level areas, tiers in the rear garden. Uh, just using this site location plan, this is the uh, property Bethany in the middle here. Um, detached bungalow in the defined urban area at uh, Walder Slade. As you can see here, it's within a built-up frontage of other properties and just to the northeast of, of Boxley Road. The land slopes up from Boxley Road uh, relatively steeply, actually, towards the rear of the site. And there's an area of ancient woodland, which is the green area there, uh, and the sort of hatched area, which runs over it and, and comes out here slightly, is a tree preservation order. Um, there's currently a single-storey rear extension being constructed at the back, uh, and that's being done under permitted development rights. So I've had to sort of blow this uh, plan up, so hopefully it's, it's clear. So um, the proposal is for a two-storey front extension. So this is the existing property on the left here, um, and it will involve raising the roof by 2.2 metres, and we'd have two uh, gables largely glazed at the front there. It would also bring the property forward by one metre to the front. To the rear, would be obviously the roof would raise up with the extension and there'd be a flat roof dormer but that would not extend beyond the rear of the existing property it's also sorry, it's also proposed to excavate the front garden here i'll illustrate it better on the photograph shortly uh, and that would create a parking area for four cars Part of it is a re retrospective part just to put a pitch roof on the what was originally a flat roof garage at the front. So in the rear garden, engineering works are proposed, um, basically bringing two sort of terraces, if you like, either side of a, of a, of a set of steps up. Uh, the garden slope quite sleep, steeply, so there's a bit of engineering to create those. Um, Originally, a terrace was proposed above in this area. Um, this this is cross section maybe illustrates it better. So this, this is the lower terrace. Originally, a terrace was proposed high, higher up, uh, but officers felt that that would be problematic in terms of privacy, and now it's proposed simply to, to sort of regrade the land there. And this is just an illustrative plan, um, obviously showing the bungalow there. And the front extensions, raising the roof in the, and the parking area in there. Just running through the photographs. So this was taken last August. Uh, this spoil at the front is from the extension that's being constructed at the, at the back. So that's Bethany, the bungalow in the middle there. This is one on Street View, taken earlier. Um, so you can see Bethany there and, and the, the neighbouring property, which is at a higher level. And this was the garage before the, the pitch roof was put on it. And obviously the excavation would occur in that area to create the parking spaces. This is at the back of the property. They're the groundworks for the extension. So the neighbouring property to the side there. And that's a view showing the property to the west. These are the two tiers that would be created with the steps up and this is the area at the top that be that would be regraded so turning to the turning to the main issues um, these would be the impact upon the house itself the impact on the street scene and also neighboring amenity in terms of the design and the street scene as it says in the report, it's a very diverse street scene with single, two and three storey buildings and there's many different styles. Um, 
there are also many driveways with garages to the front as well, so it's quite a mix. On this basis, it's considered that the design of the extension and the increase in height is acceptable, particularly as the neighbouring property is set slightly higher. There's also some variation in the building lines, so bringing it forward by a metre is also considered acceptable. The parking area would result in uh, a loss of most of the front garden. Uh, however, again, this is not uncommon in the street scene. I think importantly, uh, there was an appeal uh, at this site in 2015. I'll just get the plans up for that. Now, this was for a two-storey front extension and a dormer window. Again, it raised the roof, but it also took the property quite, quite a way back, about four metres. In this case, the inspector had no problem with the two-storey front extension, which, as I said, that raised the roof, as we're doing now, and it also came forward. And again, the inspector referred to the diversity of buildings in the street scene. The inspector also considered that a parking area at the front would be okay, albeit that the proposal now is slightly larger. But the problem the inspector had in that case was the rearward projection and the impact on the outlook. So turning to amenity, um, as I said, that was a two-story extension, four metres off the back. The proposal we have now, um, just get to the plans. Cross section. You're probably not going to see it that clearly on the plans, but basically it does not go any further back than the current house, so it won't have any negative impact on the neighbour. In terms of the rear terraces, um, these would not result in any unacceptable loss of privacy. And as I said, the top tier now would be regraded, uh, so there would be no other looking. And on that basis, permission is recommended. And just to note, there's, a, there's an NB on this one about the conditions. So again, we would remove that from the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Harwood, then Councillor English. I well, I think the least said the better, actually, about a lot of this application. I mean, the, the site has looked like a bomb has hit it for a very, very long time. And it's, I, I, well, I, I, I understand from inspectors' decisions that our hands are pretty much kind of tied again. However, I, I, this is effectively a large new house. In, in, in its own right, with significant um, area of parking and, and, and land change reprofiling, and it's 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 been it's quite a you know traumatic impact upon the surrounding area. But I I am a little bit troubled by the history of this site because I've had an awareness of it right from the beginning about what how much work has been allowed to take place without enforcement and the way that there's been a kind of permission by kind of retrospective approach um, and it, a number of things are missed out I mean they had the ecological survey for example initially because it was a done deal it's it's next to a semi-natural ancient woodland it's a, you know it it has a, a very significant biodiversity this area and let and yet because we're in here late we we've missed all of those stages out this is a large new dwelling but in these conditions we have no reference to renewable energy generation and so on that we put if it was a new build and yet again the SPD has a whole paragraph talking about building in renewables to large new extensions and if this isn't a large extension I don't know what isn't and um, you know again it's next to a semi-natural ancient woodland but we've got no reference about building in some bat tubes or something which you'd think was obvious in, in light of the number of trees that have been lost off the site and its proximity to an ancient woodland so I, I'm, I'm just I think a little bit troubled that with extensions we, we perhaps are not having the same policy rigor to ensure good design that, that we are on on new build so I don't think there's anything we can do about it, so I'm, I'm prepared to move that we do grant permission. But I would like a condition on their reference use of renewable energy, because the front of that roof is a big roof facing southwest. It couldn't be better for, for solar PV or whatever. And obviously building in um, a niche, niches for wildlife in line with paragraph 625 again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor English. 
Yes, I, I would agree with that. Um, it, it is a little hard to tell from the outstanding quality of the plans on the screen there, but it is um, quite a large development, that much we can, can tell. I suppose about the best that could be said is that um, it can't be said to negatively impact on the existing dwelling because the existing dwelling doesn't have a great deal of character or quality. Um, although what ca character or quality it has had has been somewhat undermined by what appears to be a historical re re recreation of the action of the Luftwaffe in Kent during a, pe a period of history. Um, so this is not exactly an ideal process. So we've got to try and make the best of it and have um, an application approved with the, with the appropriately rigorous conditions such as we can. Having said that, we, apart from making the conditions a bit more fit for purpose, there isn't really much we can do. But I have to say, neither the existing dwelling or this is a particularly outstanding example of planning or good design and I can see why the parish council didn't like it very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor English. Councillor Pellegas. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say the application is here with us and some valid points have been made. Mm. But what is really frustrating is we wouldn't have seen this if it hadn't been called in by Boxley Parish Council and yet I always find it frustrating when applications are called in and then nobody turns up to speak. So I, I just wanted to make a note of that. But good points have been raised. Thank you. I don't normally comment from the chair, but I, I do think where parish councils do call items in, then they should try and be represented. I, it doesn't come over well. I, 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 and I am a parish councillor myself. And I think several of us are, so um, I, I take that point and I think it's a, a very valid point. Um, do I have a seconder? Cause, oh, yeah, sorry, Councillor English. Um, unless there are any more speakers, I am going to put this to we'll the We'll check vote. that the two conditions have been... Subject to the conditions, that, definitely subject to the conditions that uh, Councillor Harvard himself has proposed. De a delegate, yeah. So the recommendation is to approve, and obviously subject to, I think your word, Councillor, were rigorous conditions, which is rather a good word, I think. But uh, yes, subject to that. Can I just have a show of hands to approve? Okay, I think it's everybody except for. Okay, against? <laughs> Councillor Cox. And I don't think. Unless my master left me, I don't think there are any abstentions. So it's approved. I do, I do want to point, um, the actual submitted drawings on this, on this application were of a quite a poor quality. I, I do wonder, um, you know, I do hope that we will encourage future applicants to actually, to, and agents to actually put some in that were actually of a higher quality than this because it's extremely hard to tell the, the effect of the elevation from, from such plans. To be honest, I was tempted, almost tempted to say we should send it back for better drawings. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, th these are the issues sometimes we come up in planning, you know, the government set a standard and said as long as it's to scale, and as long as it's drawn uh, to scale, and as long as you can scale off it, then we can't question the quality. Uh, and, that, and it puts us in a difficult position because so some of the things that you don't see that we have to process are a lot worse than that. Um, and sometimes we feel our hands are tied, but I, I get what you say, Councillor English. Yes. Well, members, thank you. Uh, we've uh, got through the agenda fairly quickly. And um, so we've now come to the end. So thank you all very much. Thank you.